Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we have another video from another channel. These are the legends of Nerdvana. Three people who are working their way through a 3000 game collection. And then, if I know gamers, adding more to that collection before they finish working their way through it. So we're gonna bring you a video from them. We've got several videos from them coming up in the future. Hope you enjoy them. Click on the link in the description below to go check out their YouTube channel. Here we go. Today we got to play Yado. The this, last master set. We just did an unboxing of this a few mm -hmm. episodes earlier. So well, we had we to get... didn't. You guys did. You abandoned me on my because I had to work that day. And you so went wait. No, you, know, we're we're no, not sorry you abandoned it. us because yeah. you had to work. And even though this is my game that I was super excited to get out, I was we got to open out it first. Mm -hmm. So for if you guys want to hear more of our crazy banter and him complaining, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. We'd like to hang out with you again. Robert, tell us more about this game, though. So, Yato Master Deluxe Set, whatever. So, it was actually developed in 2020, but we just got it this year. So, it's, uh, it took a, about a year for it to come out. Well, there was a second, this is the second printing. Oh, there okay. was, this had the, uh, the new expansion. That got it. So, the board game geek rating is pretty good. It's 8.2. Designer is... Uh, Obligatoria apologies for mispronouncing the names here. Designer Thomas Ginsty, Wolf Plank. Uh, the arts by Jacob Vajtanowski. Um, Zig, Zig, Zig New Ungelter. And Franz Vowinkle, published by Borden Dice. I got that one down. Uh, <laughs> it plays one to five. Uh, MSRP, a little hard to figure out because the Kickstarter for just the the box game itself was seventy one bucks. Um, to get the metal coins was ninety one bucks, and I don't know what the add ons were. So for the maps and all that you see in front of us, mm -hmm. I don't know what those cost. But a lot. Um, MSRP not available yet because it's not available for retail. But I did go on and look. Uh, eBay, someone selling um, everything for two hundred fifty bucks. Well, I saw that uh, Fun Again. I think it is. It has a deal where you can get everything. Well, not the maps, but everything. Other than the mats, I think for a hundred. Oh, that's a good deal. Yeah, and then uh, Geek Market had this and the the ninety one dollar pledge for one hundred twenty five bucks. So that's not bad. That's so bad. there are a couple of options out there if you just can't wait to get it. Right. When we talk about component of pieces, uh, quality of pieces, we're going to be talking about some of the different changes, okay. um, which we kind of already went through with the unboxing, but as well as the quality that is actually in this game versus the other, um, just basically for people to understand if they want to upgrade to the deluxe version. Um, and that's what it's called, Deluxe Master Set. Yep. Hey, check that out. Um, it's deluxe. Yeah. Deluxe Master. Um, except you have to set. buy stuff to make it more deluxe. Right. Right. It's not the super deluxe, super yeah. master set. It's just the straight deluxe master. Which bugs all of us. Okay, yes. so let's talk about it. Screen printed meeples. Super awesome. Super cool. That was not the case in the original And there's version. a ton of other meeples that we didn't play with yet. Yeah, that has to do with the different expansions. You have, um, now these the tiles finances. are an add-on. They yeah. are not from the original. The original had a really good card, uh, thick um, cardboard, which is also different from the original set. Which had thinner cardboard. Which had thinner cardboard. So there's definitely different qualities out there. So depending on your personal pleasure, you can receive any of yes. Um, same thing with the geishas. The very that, first... did, that did come with this base set, though. Yeah, the, geishas, the annexes didn't, but the geishas were the add-on. Yeah. No, the ge geishas were in the main box. The geishas were in the main box. Okay, they were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but again, the beginning was a very, so the very first um, release, it was very thin cardboard, but significantly upgraded. Same thing with the blessings. Originally, they were cardboard. Um, not the case anymore. Um, now, the weapons... Uh, still a thick, or these are a thick cardboard, way better quality again than the original. Are they bigger than the original, or is that the same size? They are bigger. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, which I like better. It yeah. gives a better tactile mm -hmm. feel. Um, the player boards also are significantly upgraded. They are cut in this one versus mm -hmm. before they weren't. So that was really nice. Um, we also got the player mats to help with some of the layout, which again was really nice. Um, card wise, really good. It does have a linen finish. Definitely tell. 
good tactile filter for these for this edition. I think, I think thin. you might need to sleeve them though, because if you play this a lot, although it's nice and linen finished, but thin. Yeah, and, I, I don't and think you it's a real good them stock. Quite often. Yeah, so. so I think that you probably will want to sleeve them. And I did see on the Kickstarter set that that was an option to just get the sleeves with the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and these are different card mm -hmm. shapes, so that might be beneficial from actually getting it from the right vendor versus trying to piecemeal because there are multiple different car sizes, card sizes. So. So in the base, I've never played the base, uh, the original uh, game. So this was the first time for me. Were the uh, mission cards bigger than the action uh, cards? Yes, they were. They were, they were, were. were they? Okay. okay. Yeah. So this game, compared to the original, significant upgrade. I would say definitely, yeah, definitely worth it. At least to us who love great or quality pure pieces. Pure component wise, I would agree. Yes. get into the other layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as far as component pieces go, this is phenomenal, especially with the additional add-ons that you could purchase, like the metal coins, which we didn't really talk about. Um, they went from a heavy cardboard to a metal coin as a possible upgrade. Metal coins, the tactile feel for the metal coins is just fantastic, spot on. And the fact that they, they're they very good with the theme, um, which we'll discuss more about, I think is definitely worth it. I don't see how you can make this any game better. With all the additives that we got, I would give this a 10 on quality of pieces. The only piece that was disappointing was, I guess, what is supposed to be the first player token. It was... It was terrible. It's bad. It, it's a two-piece pagoda that slides together, um, but, but, but it's we very loose, that. and it's and peeling. It peels really bad. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I graciously, Randy got this for me for my birthday, Christmas, one of the two and when he kick-started it, and when I got home to unpack my copy, the exact same thing happened to my Pagoda. So I was not happy about that either. But to be honest though, it, for this version with 71 bucks, it's well worth 71 bucks. You get a lot of awesome stuff. And the board, the player board is beautiful as well. I mean, we don't have it in front of you, we got the map. Yeah, and it's two-sided, so if you don't like the busyness of this yeah. side, the other side is- It's got like a transparent- Basically, yeah, it's white with a faded background, so it just shows the action spaces more clearly. And, so. and, and well worth 71 bucks, easily. So score it. Um, I think I'd give it a nine, um, just because uh, there, there are some really cool pieces, some of the pieces not as cool, so I just, that, that's why I want to go a nine. I was really happy with everything, but they, I, did, I think it would have been neat if they'd maybe done the weapon tokens, either acrylic like they did with so many other things, or um, if the cards they're... were a little bit thicker stock, I would have been a little bit happier with that. Um, it's, it's minor stuff. I mean, nine is still a great score, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm just comparing it to some of the other games, and really this game quality is fantastic. Um, but you did mention the light quality of the cards. They should have been a little bit better. So I'll give it a 9.5 because of card quality and some of the upgrade things that you said and the Pagoda, I guess. But as far as getting that tactile feel of a really great upgraded game, this has it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm probably right there with you at a 9.5. I would have probably given it a 10 except for the Pagoda because mm -hmm. uh, the cards don't bother me that, and the tokens don't bother me either, really, although you're drawing them out of a bag. So like they could wear, um, you know, similar to what we saw with uh, Quacks of Quedlinburg. Right, and uh, granted, I don't have anything to compare it to, so this is just my initial yeah. impression. So, I, you know, I think 9.5 is a fair score. I, otherwise, it'd be a perfect 10 in my eyes because it's they really went out of their way to make everything nice. It's, it's very it's, cool. It's fantastic. Um, so moving on to theme, guys, I feel like I'm in feudal Japan. I mean... Rainy did it, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, listen, you got geishas. You got, I mean, the kidnapping, the assassinate, assassinate, assass assassination. Assassination. I can't talk. But my thing is, is so there's different um, level of um, missions. missions, but in those, there's different kinds. There's theft, there's mm -hmm. espionage, there's um, um, outright murder. There's uh, a kidnapping. ton of flavor right yeah. on the cards, oh, too. Oh, tons of flavor. And not only that, though, but your bonus cards, some will say you get victory points for this kind of thing, right? So you're specializing mm -hmm. in assassinations mm -hmm. or you're specializing and um, theft or your special, you know, well, that, that is and, so cool. And the rewards and what you pay has to do with the mission too. Yeah. So uh, they really made a nice flow of the mission cards from what you, the flavor text is through what you, right. you, you spend versus what you get. 
I, the theme, I, spot on, guys. I'm going to give this one a, a 10 for theme. I definitely feel feudal Japan in this in every aspect of the game. And I don't see where you can make that any better or clearer. I, I'm right there with you. I mean, the art is beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, everything about this game is beautiful. And, you know, the fact that they did take so much care in the, in the mission cards, uh, you know, I can't think of anything to dock it on. I agree. I think it's a 10 as well. I mean, if I was to be critical on anything, I think although the art is gorgeous, it's, it's samey for the cards. I mean, all the treasure cards look like treasure. You know, all the, uh, uh, the type of bonus cards has the same artwork. It's just gorgeous artwork, and it's still, I, I, I can't knock it down any. It's just, if I was to critique it, maybe it'll some yeah, if you more give substantive it... artwork would have been nice, but if I have to give it a negative, that well, would Well, I think some of the art is used to differentiate the different decks. In, oh, I, I, I agree. It is, but it's like, if you do like all the assassination cards, and they're all one type of artwork, yeah. it might have been nice to see something different, but that's very minor, and it's not enough for me to even knock it a half a point. It's gorgeous it's, yeah it's a 10 um so let's move on to rules yeah this is where things fall out yeah um, we had a hard time with so it. i've played yato many times but it's been a while so we wanted to teach robert mm -hmm. for his first time how you play regular yato not with any now, expansions if, if you have not played yato before and you were just taking this as your first copy and trying to learn the game it probably wouldn't be so bad because right. so, so if up, I was learning it by myself, it'd yeah. probably be fine. Because it's set up to give you a beginner game that's like six rounds long instead of the full 11 rounds. And it's got all kinds of different expansion modules that you can add together. Now, there are still some issues and quirks, which we'll get to in a minute on it. But the big quirk was if you want to recreate base Yato the way it was in the original mm -hmm. game, it's almost impossible with this rulebook. Because it is, the cards, the way you have to arrange them is just not conducive to it. There, there's rules that are hidden yeah. inside paragraphs. That we didn't mean, know one rule until like the end of the game. Yeah, there's there's cards that reference those rules, but then if you look in the book, you'll never find it, it you know, because it's not clearly right. delineated. It's, yeah, because we had to look it up online. And yeah. then and they then were like, like, oh, if you go to this part on page seven. And but we it's like, inside what? a paragraph. Yeah, it's yeah. not like it's a bold or it's a header right. of a paragraph. And it's, it's a, a, and it's a big deal. I yeah. mean, it'd be different if it was it's like... It's hand size. Yeah, it, yeah, mean, it's, it's a minor, but it's you huge. Can have. <laughs> and I knew there was a hand limit, but I couldn't remember what it was. But it, I didn't want to go down and try to get, right. find my old copy of Yato and find the rule book, which is really what you have to do. So if you are a fan of the original Yato, yeah, at least if you buy this as a second copy... Keep your rule book from the original or, Yato. Or download it. Uh, the other thing is, it, there's not a real good way of identifying what cards mix. There's a statement in the book where it specifically says certain ones of the, of the decks don't, don't, play well. don't play well together. I didn't find anywhere in there where it differentiated which ones go to well together. And it, there is some iconography in the corner of the cards that will help you differentiate, but you don't know what they mean. Well, that just differentiates which set they belong to. It doesn't tell you, and it's not those cards that's the problem. It's the cards that are in the event deck. And they don't tell you like which ones you can put together. And it tells you to only put two out of the whole thing together. We originally just shuffled the whole thing yeah. together before we read that. And apparently you're not supposed to do that, but there was nowhere in the book that it tell you, play with these sets together, other than the beginner game told you to use specifically these two sets. Right. So once you play the beginner game, what do you do after that? Exactly. It doesn't really tell you. Yeah, it was just, it was a very problematic rule book. Um, I was very upset with it. I mean, it's beautiful looking, Yeah. but it's non-functional. It's, it's it, if you were trying to play this and try to reset Yato, yeah, you know, now if you're just trying to learn and play this new version, and you know, and only playing, that version. But even time. then, I think you're still going to have some confusion over which decks yeah. to mix because it's just not. It's stated that you can't mix them all, but it doesn't tell you where which ones you can mix easily. Right. They they give you some scenarios in there to say you could play these sets together. So whatever. yeah, we really thought that they really it should have been set up as either a separate book for a beginner's guide and then a regular rule book for every all other times. I mean, yeah, most or or a supplemental manual. Say, all right, you've done the you regular game now. Do the most games, when you find right. an upgraded version, it will let you basically retrofit right. and play the original with that new game. Mm -hmm. This one did not do that at all. Uh, so it was very problematic. Um, so what would you score it? 
I, honestly, I can't give it above a four. I don't know if I can even give it a four. It, it was that bad. I mean, it, there was things that were just absolutely hidden. Uh, there were things that I think were missing that it was referencing that were not in there. Uh, I'd, I'd have to agree because we had a hard time with some of the concepts. Well, mm-hmm. I did anyway because I never played it. And that was a big deal with the hand size mm-hmm. being four. We didn't know that. I had six plus cards for a lot of the game. And, it's, and, and I shouldn't have. And I shouldn't have. Given that they made it so clear on the other cards, the yeah. mission cards. Yeah, I mean, max two, max, two, max three. three. Yeah, like right here. Why not put a max, max four? four? There's no reason. Well, the, the thing is, this is your completed ones. The others are in your hand. So the, this is the completed But you could missions. still have said. Wait, what's this one then? That's, that's one, one of the, one the other basic, expansions. Yeah, it's one of the expansions. Oh, I had them on the wrong side. It just said online or in the rule book or something that you could use this side to hold your uncompleted uh, missions, but still. Yeah. And I had it the opposite, they, but okay. They, they could have done a much better job with yeah. the rule book. I mean, it really, really it, it, That was a huge miss. And um, I mean, it really caused us some long, a long playthrough because yeah. we had to find that. And we played this game many times, but we were trying to play the way it was originally and we could not get there yeah. from here. Well, and it just, there was a cheat sheet. So let's talk about this cheat sheet. And I thought, okay, it's pretty good, but it's, like you said, missing some of those basic. Like, they could have put it on here, you know, Max Hand, right. or, or next to the mission section. Hey, only have so many, right? Mm-hmm. But they didn't They didn't even do that. Yeah. I mean, I thought, well, I thought be careful, it was cool. One's yeah, one side's co-op side, and one's the player. Yeah, yeah, so pay so. attention to that. But I mean, which is cool that they got the player aid for both. Just yeah. I, I would say they almost wrote the rule book around all the new stuff. And yeah. And at the detriment of the original stuff, uh, and made it, it, it just that much harder to try to recreate and play the original way. And right. I still don't know how we, how the event decks are supposed to work. I'm gonna have to probably research that online to just try to figure out yeah. how we can mix the, and mingle the event decks. You know, it'd be nice if you could just shuffle them all together. Right. But, you know, you can't. obviously you can't. So let's move on to gameplay. Um, so. We start out with workers, right? Um, you can, and you start out with, with two. With two. Um, then, so the first part of the round, though, is a bidding phase. So, um, with, well, the first is a preparation phase oh, preparation. that sets up the round, but basically it's clean up from the previous yes. round. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the second is the bidding phase. So, you, depending on how many players, you either bid on a color section of the bidding process, or you can just do one individual thing if you have enough players. Um, and you start the bidding. So as the first player, you say, okay, I'm going to bid on black, or I'm gonna bid on geisha, okay? You do not have to bid at that point. Everyone else does. You were the last person to bid, so in the end. And that bidding is affected by player count. So yes. with three players, you have to bid on the color of the type of I right. said that, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you specified you bid on black or geisha. But and I said it's based on color. Okay. But she did base. But so either way, yeah, but still, it, I not having played more than three, I, I thought that was interesting that you bid on the type or the area of the action, the color, not yeah. on the action itself. Yeah, I, I think that was an interesting component with the lower player count, but still getting... Yeah. But then you still have contention, right? So I thought oh, that was time. actually really good. Where five players are playing enough contention as it was, you didn't need any more of that. Um, so that was good. All right, so towards the end of the game, though, I will say some of... So black became useless. I didn't like that in that three player because basically only two people got something uh, it wasn't completely useless you got victory three points yeah, it's still yeah, for the it most kind, part it's kind of useless um and i ended up getting stuck not being able to do anything i didn't get the money from passing nor did i get the item because i only right. had three money and not five and so that part was very very frustrating um it just towards the end it was almost like well i'll just skip because i don't want to end up not getting anything because i'm last player so that one was pretty rough um and then, so after that bidding phase, you get certain items based on where you bid. It could be mission cards. It can be geisha. It can be extra workers. Dang it nice. can be building annexes, um, which are limited. They go fast. Get those quickly. Uh, that Stretchy. made me frustrated. Yeah, no kidding. There's not enough. There's only two. There's, there, for there's a three-player game. Yeah, one less than the number of players. Mm-hmm. So and it, that's rude. So you really have to go and get those. Um, and then... Almost more than your workers, which is super lame because normally it's always go get your workers mm-hmm. first. Um, and then there's also you can get weapons, uh, end of game bonus cards, and then actual um, effect of the game mechanic cards, action cards. 
Um, so after that bidding process happens, you're going into the event phase, which standard event, you draw the card, you read the card, you do the thing. Um, so that's not a big deal. And then the assigning phase, this is where you place your workers. You go in um, the player order, which is not based on counterclockwise or anything like that. It's based yeah. on the chart that you have. You got like seven districts on your map. Yes. You can go. And, and depending on the number of players also affects the different, how much of a location is available, just like any standard um, worker, uh, worker placement. So that's not crazy unusual. And then the interesting, so after you start assigning things, um, then the watch patrol happens. So this is the interesting mechanic. Yeah, he's a jerk. Yeah, so in the center, um, well, Randy's a jerk, and the Watch Patrol's a jerk. Yeah. So in the center, the Watch Patrol, he it's either a gold or silver watchman, and depending on the color, he goes into a certain direction. So there are cards that change his color. So one way, one time you may think he's going counterclockwise, clockwise, but then someone may switch it up and say, nope, he's going counterclockwise, and you get screwed. Or then block you for yeah. playing or, that card. <laughs> or, or there's some cards that say, Dub, go double, go twice, right? Um, or stay where you're at, stay at the location that the he, you know, he gets distracted or whatever. Um, so that's interesting. But if the patrol is on the location that you're trying to do something at, all those workers essentially go to prison. Basically, you lose those workers and have to repurchase them, which is kind of rough. It's um, brutal. <laughs> it is really brutal. Now, there are cards that allow you not to get arrested or allow to move your worker before they get arrested. So there are some cards that mitigate some of that, but man, those cards are hard to get anyway. And just, oh, it's just your- But you do get expensive. a free get out of jail free card. To yeah, start you can do it one but time. Only one, yeah. right? So, it's, and that went fast. So that doesn't, but again, I think that's an interesting component to this game that a lot of other places, a lot of other things don't have um, that I actually really appreciate. Um, and then the last, so there's two more, there's the trade phase, which if you're at, there's two different locations, you can trade um, with the other people at that location. You can trade weapons, you can trade um, mission cards, you can trade, what was the other thing? You can trade pretty much anything. Except, other than except for annexes. Buildings. Yeah, you which can't trade Miranda annexes. really tried to change the rules you on You cannot that. trade annexes, you cannot trade completed missions. Yeah, well, obviously um, not. And you cannot yeah. trade your workers. But apart from that, you can trade anything. <laughs> yeah, which is actually super helpful because you can only hold four weapons, right? Like, it's a lot easier to be like, hey, you need that one weapon. I need this other weapon. Let's trade. Um, I, I actually like the fact that that trading ability is there. Um, and the reason why is because she mentioned the missions cards. You got four different ones. You start off with green. They all have requirements. And many times it's weapon specific. And you might have to location turn in location specific. Location specific, and you might have to turn in a, or have a geisha or a blessing, right? Or, so or money or, or an annex. annex. You know, there's and so and they they go in difficulty from green being easy all the way up to black being nigh impossible. Yeah. So the different resources in this game to go over quickly is weapons. There's different kinds of weapons. Um, geishas. Um, the blessing token, you can only have one at a time. It's a resource, sort of. Then money as well as workers. Um, and the annexes, all the different cards. There's a bunch of different moving mechanisms to this game, which keeps me interested in going. Um, so the last one is, the last phase of the round is the action phase. So in turn order, you're gonna take one worker off and trigger an action, either an action of the location or to finish a mission that has that requirement. So for example, this one requires someone to be at the um, Red Lantern District, okay? So if I were to pull a worker off, he could complete this mission. Um, but now there's multiple locations. So like this one has um, is at the market. So if I could take it off the market or the Red Lantern District, it doesn't matter. It's just whatever, which one's on the card, you complete the mission, but they have to be at those little those locations to trigger. You have to have workers there. So um, as soon as all the workers are taken off and the actions are completed, then the round restarts and you go back into the prep phase and then into the bidding phase. One of the interesting parts of the actions, which it didn't apply a whole lot, but it did hit me one time and I didn't like it, was that when you play since in an action district and someone else does, but they go first and they may do something, that takes away the benefit of going there. 
you still have to do that action. Mm -hmm. So there might be a different action that you have to do if you're able to do it, but you don't want to do it. Right. But you have to do it anyway because you're able to do it. That screwed me out of some money once because I didn't want to do that action. One of you two did what I wanted to do. And then, be, well, like, for example, you go to the, the area with that has the church. It starts with three money on it. And so I wanted the money, but Miranda kept taking the money, so I didn't have it. So then I would have to spend money to buy victory points, which is nice. I just didn't want to spend the money. I wanted to uh, save my money to be able to bid for the uh, stuff at the top. And it was like, oh, yeah, no, there were, it was cool, but oh. Yeah, no, there were tons of times where it's like, crap, I can't do the thing I wanted to do because I end up having to spend money elsewhere or whatever. Right. Or they took my action, mm -hmm. and it was very frustrating, but in like a good yeah. Yeah. frustration. Yeah, because and one it, of the most commonly ones, occurring ones, is the the turn order one. Because yeah. if you somebody triggers the turn order, it happens immediately, and it affects turn order for the rest of that round. But you might have gone there thinking you were going to complete a mission, and you weren't going to use it for turn order. But if somebody lifts it, it removes all of the workers from the turn order, and therefore triggers the turn order sequencing for everybody. Which is so nice. Um, so I will say there is a lot of take that. Yes. We are definitely clans going after each other and trying to be the best. This game mm -hmm. can be brutal. It can yes. and is. And now, luckily, knowing that going in, you can be a little lighthearted about it and being like, ah, you know, yeah. but yeah. the reality is if you have a sensitive person, it may not be the best game to play. Um, so like me in a special mood, I don't want to play this, but me ready to go after it. I love this game. So I did get grumpy during the game, but I got grumpy not because of the game being bad I, or me being in a bad mood. It was because there was stuff I wanted to do and they kept jacking with me and it just, <laughs> it got frustrating. But it so, happened to all of us. Like there's no, like it picked on one person. It was I, I spread say, out evenly. I this think. is another one of those games that you don't. You talk about it afterwards. I'm still yeah. hearing, never going to hear the end of the game that I played with my coworker Jason. Oh yeah, where he had a sword I needed, and I offered to trade with him, and I had a mission that I needed the sword to do to assassinate one of the other players' pieces. And I did. I was like, please don't come to this location, Jason. Please don't come. But he went to the location, so I had to play my mission. I killed his player with his own sword. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, he was never going to let me down on that. He traded me the sword that I needed to kill him. Yeah, I mean, so I think there is a... Just go into knowing, like Maria yes. said, go mm -hmm. into this game knowing that. And it's okay to get grumpy, you know? It's okay to be frustrated as long as... Everybody at the table knows that. And you We're having it, fun. Take it for what it is and have a good time with it. Yeah, absolutely. So overall, guys, what would you give it as a score? Now, this is just my initial playthrough. So I, I, there's, I need to play this game more to really, I think, fall in love with it. I'm at a nine. You're at a nine. Wow, I was thinking you were not going to say that no, at all. No, no. no. After I mean, playing through it with you that other yeah. day. And the fact that you were just saying this no, is your initial no, play. Yeah, yeah, it I can only go up for a nine. I, I, I was grumpy. Okay. And, and I was grumpy, but, but, it, it, but, like but, it, but it was still fun. Okay. And I still enjoyed it. I still feel like it was a good kind of grumpy. Because yeah. it's like because sometimes games are too easy, it's not very fun, it's yeah. boring. Right? But this had enough frustration yeah. without being completely like disheartening. Well, just keep in mind, we were playing the nicest version right. of the game. Yeah, and there, there the were there was like no negative side effects. We didn't really talk about the event deck. But after you're done with bidding, you got to reveal an event card, and they were all nice. Yeah, got money. We got played with extra the, work. We played with the ones in the starter game. Yeah. I, I will they say, they get way worse. No, it was so funny because when we were reading, I'm like, man, these are way too nice for Yada. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, man, this is like nice stuff. Normally, you get like you lose a game. I think I got one event that negatively impacted me during the game because it was like because I was first player. We turned reverse turn order. I think yeah, it was. yeah, yeah, yeah. And but that's only, still not horrible. No, it, no, it, it, it's impactful though. But it's it wasn't. It was not. There's a lot worse cards in the deck. Yeah. So what was your score for it then? He's giving it a nine. What are you giving I, it? I don't. I, I'm, I don't feel like I got all the room to go up from there because it's like his first play was a nine, which is kind of surprising considering how much he grumbled. Um, because I, I was probably going to go a nine on this. I I I, I think an, I'm still a nine as far as Yeda. Yeah. 
I don't think that our experience with this first playthrough of this new set was a nine. I I feel like there was so much pain and hardship of trying to set it up and get it to be like Yato, the original, that I can't give it a nine for that playthrough. Right, but I can't compare to yeah. that. So. But once we got actual playing of it, I, I do think the gameplay of Yato is a nine overall. I think it is is I would almost give it a perfect. I mean, it's it's basically a more advanced version of a more cutthroat version of Lords of Waterdeep. I mean, there's not the, the actions of it, the missions. It's, it's very Lords of Waterdeep esque. And but, another thing in my defense, uh, even though I was grumpy, is that now I know what the game's like. Uh -huh. So now I can approach it with a different attitude and make sure that I don't get yeah. as grumpy as I got. Yeah. yeah. The, the reason I wouldn't give it a 10 is there, from what I understand from people who played a lot of it, is there are there are strategies to break it. To, that can break it, and I don't like games like that. Right. But we've never played it in such a way, so you know. But yeah, you know, we do have friends who yeah. do play those kind of games in that kind of way, so I could see it happening. Right. So I, what I, would you score? Well, so here's my thing: if I am in the mood for a little bit of a take that, this is the kind of take that that I like. I like the worse placement. I like. You you say Waterdeep, but I don't feel like that does this justice because there's so many moving parts and it's so beautiful and seamless. Um, if I'm in the mood, I'm right there with you guys at a nine, nine and a half. As long as I'm up for that, this kind of game, this is the game right. that but I keep would Keep in mind, to. we gave Waterdeep a 10. So, so we're comparing well, it to a good standard here. Yeah. Say, well, here's the thing. It, it, you're, you're right, but I think this is... A much uh, Waterdeep is for beginners. Yes, this is an advanced game. This, this is not a beginner's game. No, no, this no, is, no. This is medium. I'd say medium, probably solid medium. Yeah, I mean, and and, and there are aspects of Waterdeep. I see where you're where you're going with that, but at the same time, there's so many other components to this. Yeah, it, and it's a beautiful and, and I hope I never learn the the breaking stuff. Oh, yeah, that no, would destroy either. this game for me, and I would be really bummed. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me. I don't want to know. Um, Is that well, it? That's it. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Right. Bye. Talk to you next time. Bye. Adios.